I'm a little bit late getting out this morning. Breakfast took longer than usual. We ate and then I had to make pancakes and Hillary said, well, why are you making pancakes? And I said, I gotta make them for the cows. She said, why are you making pancakes for the cows? And I said, because they don't know how. We'll go ahead and see Red's piglets. Cute little buggers. Hey guys, look at these little chunks. Still 11. Here's the proud mom. Hi Red. These guys are growing along just like they should be. They are a week and two days old now. Hey little one. Hey, you're a goofball. Look at you run around circles. I don't know, it looks like they're getting ready to run, run, run when I come in. Won't be long. Right, little monsters? You guys are full of energy today. There we go. Yeah, come see me. Hi, Mom. <laughs> How are you? Oh, they're trying me out. Does he taste good? This morning the sun is finally out and I want to finish getting the 656 ready for haying season. I already changed the oil and changed the hydraulic transmission fluid in it which was a pretty big job. And now I got a whole bunch of little things to fix and then we can clean her up and she'll be ready to go. I want to pull the air filter and see what kind of shape that's in. A perennial problem on these Rosamaster injection pumps is these banjo bolts that lead to the injector lines. They leak around the ceiling washers and I keep cranking them down. And getting to them with a loader on is not the easiest thing. In fact, I have to use a stubby wrench to get the ones around back. And blow out the radiator. Check the tire pressure. Gee, good. Grease up all the fittings. Now I can pull her out and give her a good wash down. I know a lot of people say never to pressure wash off a tractor, but I'm not worried about blowing away new paint on this tractor. And it's important to get the manure off the rims and things so they don't rot out. I also blast the areas where I have a little hydraulic seepage and around the hydraulic lines and the injection pumps so I can see if the tractor starts to leak badly. I'll know right where it's leaking if the area is clean. What do you call a man with a rubber toe? Roberto, duh. Who would have a rubber toe anyway? Who would need that? Well, I guess Roberto does. <laughs> well, it is that time. We gotta go down and move the cows. Uh-oh, they see us coming. It's time to bellyache. They gotta plead their case, you know. You guys have been patiently waiting for us, haven't you? You're so patient. Hey, guys. After my mower broke last week, I ordered a new drive shaft for it, a whole new one with bigger, um, U joints in it because that was like the third time that it happened. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've tightened down the paddocks a bit and they're doing a good job at taking down the seed head. So they've got this left and I think I won't need the mower, but when they get down to that field, I'm pretty sure I am. I bought some coconut shampoo the other day and then I realized I don't even own a coconut. It's 
scoop it up guys Man, they sure can't shovel it in. Even the little ones. Hey, Marty. You are a cutie. I feel like I'm in kind of a holding pattern. I'm waiting for a stretch of weather to make hay, and <laughs> I love making hay, and I'm like, come on, let's go. But anyway, I've been messing around and tuning up the equipment and making sure everything's ready. I got the sheet metal back on the MD. It's not fit right, but it's good enough for now. I thought we could take it down and check the hay. Field, which has not been grazed at all, the triangle field, and see how that is. Ooh, boy, look at this. Wow. I think this is ready to cut. Let's see what we got here. Of course, we got a lot of orchard grass heading out, and it's starting to turn. See that purpley gray tinge to it? And then lots of alfalfa growing down low here. In this particular field, the clover really comes on late in here usually. And I get alfalfa early, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's the way it goes. This is really heading out. There will be a lot of bulk in this field for sure. A lot of mass, which I like. The triangle field that I'm standing in is about five acres and then I've got another five acres here in the middle field which the cattle haven't touched this year either and then another two acres over there to cut and then way over the hill over there I've got another six acres to cut. We're supposed to get a break in the weather maybe later this week. It's going to warm up and get sunny. I hope the forecast holds. I'll be cutting then. Man, is it tall and thick too. All right, let's see if I can get the double clutch right on this tractor. Nope. <laughs> That's gonna take some practice. It's time for these guys to eat. This little guy is four weeks old. This guy's six weeks old. Say hi to the camera. And this guy is eight weeks old. He looks mad. And here's all three of them in a row. Four weeks old, <laughs> six weeks old, eight weeks old. These ones actually at eight weeks old are ready to butcher and we started butchering last week. They're dressing at about four to four and a half pounds. Hillary takes care of feeding and water in the broilers and the layers over here. We split the chores up and I head into the barn to take care of the brood pigs and the cows and the little piglets now. Land hens are doing great. Howdy bowls. It's time for dinner.
I ration the bull's hay out into half day quantities because you see what they do. They pull it into the pen because they can't really stick their heads through the bars and then they trample on half of it so it goes to waste. I gotta go in and feed the pigs, but you've already seen them today, so I'm not gonna take you in with me. Today's Memorial Day for us. Even though you're seeing this tomorrow, I hope you had a great Memorial Day. I'm gonna fire up the grill after I get done here and cook some Dexter burgers and Hoffman hot dogs, a local favorite, and take the rest of the day off. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.